Hi everyone, Melissa here with The Creative Season. Well, you can tell we're painting hydrangeas today, but a little bit of a different subject. I wanna bring you behind the scenes as I start to work on a new design for a card series coming up. I love um, taking my art and putting it into cards, which is just a functional way of sending art and beauty out into the world. I still love snail mail and I know many of you do as well. And while I take you behind the scenes, I think that there might be some other people who also are maybe playing with the idea of taking their art, creating it into cards. And I'm just gonna show you what I do. It's a little bit messy. This one, it will not make it to the final round, but it's just an idea of how to get started. Hi everyone, well we're gonna do something just a little bit different today and we are going to, I'm just gonna take you behind the scenes of what it looks like when I start to um, plan for a new series of cards. And so I am just coming out with a new release of art, of acrylic art that I'm super excited about and I think I'm gonna do the same group line with, um, and our collection as well with watercolor with cards and so I have been loving hydrangeas and that's been the theme of the new art series again not yet released it's going to go first to those who are on the email list so if you'd love to get a sneak peek definitely come on over there but today what I thought I would do is I'm just going to show you what I do as a quick sketch when I am starting to plan and look at everything um or look at a new flower for a new card series, and I have been in love with hydrangeas for a while. So if you wanna paint with me, feel free. I'm gonna kind of move um, fairly quickly, as you know I normally do, but also to, I am gonna be a little bit more freestyle today. And so, um, and I'll just again talk as I'm painting. You're gonna to see too that I do not use every leaf on the flower. I pick and choose what I'm gonna bring in there, but I definitely love, um, I love how beautiful the leaves of hydrangeas are, how beautiful their stems are. This one you can see that it's been cut quite a bit. A lot of the leaves have been cut off, but I was really glad that the florist left in quite a bit of the leaves as well. So I am just going to make sure I get my stem, the nice pointy end. We've got pointies over here, and then I am not going to do too much sketching. And I'll come in so you can see this a little bit more with my actual flowers. In fact, I'm gonna do some painting, but I'm not gonna to do tons of sketching. Now this one probably will not end up being a card. I can already tell my flower is not gonna quite go off. It's gonna go off, but that's okay, because this is kind of my warm up one. And I'll tell you a little bit more about my process as we get going. So I'm gonna just do maybe a little mock-up one right here. I love hydrangeas too. They look like they're almost a tree full of flowers, right? They really have a very unique, unique look about them. And that's one of the, the, the defining characteristics that I really love. Just they're almost, it's like a ton of flowers all in one flower. So I'm just gonna kind of start like that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling in my paint. And I am going to um, do a blue hydrangea as well. I'm going to even show where I've got the cuts of the flowers. And this is kind of a fun idea. If you really enjoy painting flowers or um, and you're thinking you might want to design your own card, there is nothing stopping you. It is not difficult as far as there's a lot of um, people to help with the tech aspects of it. And it might be a fun idea for um, I don't know if you love to send out snail mail, like this is National Letter Writing Month and I'm probably gonna pop in with another more um, letter-oriented, art letter-oriented YouTube video. If not this week, definitely next week. But you know, if you wanna make an art that's a little bit, cards that are a little bit more personal, you could always design your own. And it's, again, I started, it was during the pandemic that I started creating my own art, um, specifically for cards. And once I started, um, some years I'm a little bit more consistent about it than others. But again, it is not difficult. There's different ways to you can do it. But there, the tech part is not as hard as it used to be, and you can do small batch printing. So if you've thought about it, I'm gonna just share a little bit behind the scene tips of what I do. First of all, I make sure not to put tons of pressure on myself like on the first time to get it right. So I'll start with a practice like I'm doing today. But then too, I'm gonna actually set up three more and I'll probably paint them all simultaneously, kind of going back and forth. I'll probably do that this evening. 
And that way I really take the pressure off, feeling the need to make one super perfect. I'm gonna come in here a little bit more. And you can see even with this one, this one I'm not, I'm again, I'm not, I, I've already in my mind thought this is not gonna be the one, but this is gonna help me with the flow. And so when you start to do your own designs, perhaps for um, cards, or perhaps maybe you're thinking about you wanna create some art as gifts this year, think about doing a couple like simultaneously. Even with my acrylic art, I'm usually painting more than one at a time. It takes a little while for the paint to dry. Also, it just helps me with my with my own artwork to not get so tied up with one piece of art, but to just really move around. Now, one of the secrets with watercolor is you wanna move, um, or with any art, you do wanna move the colors around so you're not just all blue in one area, green in one area, etc. So I try to keep a pretty limited palette with my art, not all the time, and I really did with my release of the Hydrangea collection, which I believe the collection, I think I finally came up for a name last night. It's just simply gonna be called Vision, and there's definitely a story behind the name behind this art collection. So again, I'll include a link to where you can sign up for the email, and that is where I tend to share my most personal things. I share what's on my heart, what I'm thinking about, what's inspiring me, all the new, the new releases, the sales, all those good things. So I'm just now gonna go ahead and painting some of my stem. And then also I'm gonna paint my leaves as well. One of the things I love about hydrangeas too is that they have, um, I'm gonna use another, that was a hooker's green and I'm gonna pull up um, a permanent green. They have, a, uh, they're not attached directly to the stem. They have a little like zoop thing, I don't know what to call it, that at first is this, the leaf being just attached right at the stem. There's almost like a growth and then it really creates this beautiful and lovely, graceful fall of the leaf which I think is very elegant. And not all flowers have that. Some flowers or leaves are just popping right off of the stems, but not with hydrangeas. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm just dropping in my paint. I am gonna pull in a little bit of yellow. This is quite the spring color palette and a spring hydrangea. Um, I was out on 28th Street earlier this week Actually, when it was the eclipse, actually, I was catching the eclipse, and that was really interesting. But getting picking up some hydrangeas, and there's some pink ones. There were some really deep blue ones, but I ended up getting a bunch of these kind of medium blues, and they were just gorgeous at one particular shop that seemed just to have the best selection as far as they looked fresh. And so I picked them up and have just been, they've been beautiful the last few days. I do love that about hydrangeas, that they really do last for a, a good, I say a good 10 days, if not up to two weeks. Not, a, not all cut flowers have that longevity. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead here. I'm gonna add this, just a little bit of yellow up in here because I can see some yellow right in there. So I'm always looking at my flower too and going, okay, what other colors, like what nuances do I see in there? And definitely there's more color than just the blue. So I'm gonna come out a little bit so you can see like the whole painting and what that looks like. Again, I'm not gonna, I'm just putting a touch of a couple of stems and I have to be careful because it does have a tendency of course to turn to green, right? So we have to be careful of that. I notice there's just a touch of yellow just here and there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move that around. I'm gonna come back here now, pick up, wash my brush, and then pick up yellow. So we talked first about being real casual, right? No pressure. We talked about doing a couple of paintings at the same time. And then one of the other things is, is just almost different styles of painting. Like you maybe have painted with me, if you have been painting with me for a while, you know we do splatter art. And I have a whole course on floral splatter art, which is so much fun. And I could do splatter art for a hydrangeas versus this time I'm doing more of just regular, um, your kind of more traditional painting. But I absolutely, tonight I am gonna do some splatter art and just say, okay, I wonder if that might also be something that would, would translate really well into a card. 
with cards and if you're taking your art and making it into other things, it does look differently on different mediums. Um, and so I try to, instead of trying to like shrink my art down to the size of the card, I make the art the size of the card and see if it, how it looks and how it presents. And I've had several things where I thought it was gonna look great, but actually smaller was not, wasn't better. I, I kind of, I just lost, it was too busy of a piece of art. And so when I try to make it small, versus when I try to minimize it, it just didn't quite work. So I hope that makes sense. So I recommend making your art the size of the card if you want to do a four by six or five by seven, which this is what this this series will be a five by seven. Because I like a really generous a really generous space to write in or to put stamps in. Speaking of stamps, I recently found a bunch that I'm going to definitely be using on my snail mail this month. Okay, so I'm also getting to the point too where you think to yourself, do I need to just take a break? Being because we can get muddy. So what I'll probably end up doing is I probably will come to a stop. Not quite yet. I want to actually really saturate some of my colors here. And if I avoid, just as long as I avoid the yellow, I'm going to be fine. Now I'm, go I'm going to add in some colors around that yellow in just a minute here. And I will come back on this particular one with my pen. I won't bring it in for the video, but I will come back with my pen and just add in some more color. I'll kind of look around here and say, okay, where else do I just need a lighter bit of color? Like I brought in that deeper blue, but where can I just drop in some cerulean blue too? Remember with watercolor too, you can really create the essence of the shape, you don't have to do the exact flower. So I'm creating those flower shapes. I'm seeing where I'm gonna add in some little bit more detail. I'm gonna look where there would be, I have a shadow kind of cast over the whole thing because where the natural light is. But a lot of times, I can really see where the shadow is as well. So don't forget to, down below, you're gonna have darker flowers, right? Because there's typically not gonna be so much light shining on the darker area. So don't forget to come back in with your art and really create that darker area. And then this leaf right here would be underneath the flower. So we need to make sure to create a darker leaf there. So what I can do is I can come in with some more green because every time you add in another layer of color, it's going to dry darker, but I'm also going to add in some blue. And so when I add in some blue here, we're going to get a darker green leaf and I'm going to come back through here as well and just add a little bit more. I'm gonna come up over here. I can see darker areas right over here on this leaf coming down. And so once again, we wanna create that darkness, that contrast. Contrast is beautiful. You don't want your entire painting to have the same intensity of color. You want to create areas of contrast. And think about that too if you're creating art for a car. You know, you think about well, how is the eye gonna go around this painting, where do you want the eye to travel up to or down to? That will may really affect what kind of background you use as well. So I'm just gonna move this down here. I'm gonna add in a little bit of blue where I can see some shadowing or some just darker areas where it was cut. I'm gonna come back up here now too with some yellow and I'm just gonna let that yellow soak in and just move around here. I'm gonna put a little bit more of that blue green down at the edge here, as well as dip some more green right in here. Okay, and that is a really fabulous start, right? It looks really, really nice. You could even see up here, I definitely wanna create, I'm actually gonna take a little bit of my blue green and just even move that color around just a little bit, especially around in here where I have the yellow. I'm gonna put a little dot here. Again, move that green a bit in here too. And there we go. Okay, so this is a good start. I really like this and you can see where it really starts to build, but I'm gonna do again three more. Now what I'm gonna do at the bottom too is I could do some splatters. That could be really cute. And just to show you what that might look like, again, really when you start to play, really fun things can happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and do just some splatters. 
And maybe when I create this card, I, one of these, I'll make like a thank you card. And so I'll leave a blank space so I can write the words thank you or another sentiment of some sort. I've never done like a happy birthday um, line, but I thought about maybe doing a bunch of like a bouquet of someone uh, putting a, a happy birthday bouquet. Think about that too if you're going to be making cards for Christmas or if you wanted to make your own cards for like a birthday, a birthday line. And whether you sell them or whether you just use them for yourself as you mail them out to family and friends and colleagues, um, clients, it's just a fabulous way. I think it's a fabulous way to share your beauty, your art, your gifts with other people and really brighten their day. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've enjoyed seeing a little bit of how I start preparing and thinking and just kind of playing as I get my mind ready for another creation of cards. And um, it just, again, happy National Card and Letter Writing Month. It's a fantastic month to be thinking about creating and writing. And I hope you, I hope you are both able to send out a couple cards this month as well as receive them. So look at what we did in just 15 minutes. Just a little bit of time um, to play with our art and just really to have a good time, right? It's just such a fun, fun way to finish your day or take a break in the afternoon or start your day. So thank you for joining me today and I am so excited to be painting with you this spring. I will link up to that other hydrangea painting as well if you want to do some more painting of these lovely, gorgeous, robust